and your reaper. Those kids out there seem mad thirsty. You got something for them to drink? Yo, we could wet up two cups of blood. <laughs> Hey, it's been a it's been a minute, I think. It has been. It has been. Well, um, life went a little sideways on us all, and uh, we haven't recovered. Well, we haven't recovered, but we figured this shit out. Yeah. It. Uh, thank you very much, Velocinate, for a fantastic technical support here. I'm in a remote studio with the beautiful microphone that you've lent me, and uh, it's really too beautiful to be in my home. It's lovely. <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, okay. Um, yeah, we're doing a remote one for once um, for the first time, but it wasn't too hard to figure out. We just had to get our asses into gear and, and get it going. So apologies for that. But uh, we do have a we do have a cup today. Um, we went into the X Human archives and uh, pulled out one of the old drink specials, and we're trying to give it a little twist. So. I think we found this under the name The Cracked Tombstone. Yes. Or C is for Cracked Tombstone. Cracked Tombstone, yep. Um, It's an an exciting beverage uh, that was cola and tequila. I think if I'm judging from what the establishment usually serves, it's probably cola and hornitos, and that's what you get. Um, We elevated it a little bit this time because... There's no point in buying Hornitos if you're not out, I think. uh, Tequila people are probably like, hey, that's a good one. But not not in my book. So what did did you end up going with? Uh, On your recommendation, I got the uh, Don Julio Blanco. So that's what I've got. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I had a little uh, straight... Um, cause I'm not a big tequila person and I certainly, I certainly don't know, uh, different brands. So, um, the Don Julio was surprisingly, um, uh, pretty smooth for tequila and yeah, it wasn't bad. So, um, yeah, this one mixed up very nice and I added some spiced cherry bitters. So it's kind of like a little bit like a cherry Coke and, and tequila. So it's not bad. Oh, that's, that's very interesting. Cause I, so I am also doing a Don Julio, but I did not go Blanco. I'm going Anejo, which is like the, uh, the old uh, – I'm not really a tequila guy, so I'll just say it's the whiskiest of the uh, of the tequilas. It tastes the oaky most to aged. me. Yes, yes. It is definitely the eldest. Nice. But, um, so, yes. yeah, I haven't sipped it yet, but I did uh, Don Julio Anejo with – uh, cola and some lime bitters because tequila and lime, I think, are supposed to be a combo. I haven't, yes. I haven't sipped it yet. I'll, I'll go ahead and give that a sip. Let's see. Did you sip yours? Oh yeah. Oh, you, you cheater! Yeah. What are you doing? Well, you know, this, this is new for me. I, had, I was curious. There's plenty left. Oh my gosh, that is incredibly drinkable. Yeah, mine's pretty good. I could see this being a problem. <laughs> like it's. I would love to try the Anejo because I think, uh, based on my previous previous experience, that's the one I would I would like a little bit more. But I, I cheaped out at the store. The extra, you know, ten or twenty bucks was like, eh, not, I'm not that big a tequila person. I'll just get the Blanco. You know, I I really went out on a <clears throat> on a limb to to pick up the Anejo, but. Being afraid of tequila a little bit, I at least wanted something that a tequila person who might be, you know, being hosted would say, oh, that's a good one. So I don't think you really can go wrong with Don Julio, though. I think that across the board, it's a it's a pretty good tequila, no matter what the seems offering. like it. Yeah, the Blanco is very nice for sure. So are you uh staying healthy these days other than just staying home mostly oh man trying um 
what what really has hurt me um, in these last couple months, I mean, I've been going through some personal stuff, which kind of threw off my whole deal. But uh, I also um, kind of messed up my elbow. So I have like a tendonitis in my in my right elbow that has been hanging on for quite a while now. So I can't do my rowing machine, which is what I primarily do to work out at home. So, um, you know, through the end of the winter, it was really rough because I couldn't really get outside and do anything. And I couldn't do a whole hell of a lot inside. Um, so it's been good now that the weather has been changing to actually get out and uh, be able to walk and, and try some running and, and stuff like that. So uh, that's helping a lot. It's also helping just my mood, just getting some sun and uh, seeing some blue sky, you know. Yeah, I think there is, even for a shut-in hermit like myself, there is a, th- a therapeutic value to just getting outside, even just just sitting outside on a stoop or just wandering for a second. It, uh, it I think it helps. Yeah, for sure. Oh, for me, anyway. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, but, uh, but, you know, the wife and I are keeping healthy. We've been, um, we've been getting into some new, uh, well, I don't know if it's a new opportunity exactly, but, uh, X Humanity has. What? No, go ahead. I said pyramid scheme. Come on. (laughs) No. No, Okay. Uh, X Humanity has rolled forward into the world of streaming. So there've been some shows on Twitch and, uh, you know, we were invited. Basically, it was an open call. Any any of the DJs were pretty much invited to do the last uh, couple events. So um, DJ Tetchy and I uh, have been opening the show the last couple times, and uh, I'll be doing the next one as well, uh, the first Friday in June. So that's been fun, figuring out Twitch and figuring out uh, we've been using OBS to do the streaming and uh, getting you know, the audio from tractor to play nice with the streaming software and, uh, figure out some visual stuff to do. Um, that's been, that's been really fun because, you know, you can, you can have a couple drinks, uh, you can do your thing, you can turn up, you can blast the music in your house. And when you're done or when your ears get tired or whatever, you can turn things down, you can turn it off, you can walk away. You don't have to deal with anyone else you know as an introvert it's it's kind of nice to not have to deal with other drunk people you don't want to talk to and um it's 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 pretty cool we we have fun you know we've got a fog machine and some lighting effects so it's an excuse to turn all that stuff on and oh uh, yeah smoke alarms you know <laughs> your your shows have always been really like awesome i think it's funny you, you have very good lighting but beyond that, I think the the fog machine is really the kicker. That's the nicest. <laughs> well, it's thank really you. Good. It's the part I it's the part I enjoy. Um, we've actually so, been finding some different angles too uh, to use the the lighting effect through the fog. Um, I might try switching that stuff around for the next stream and see how that goes. So, um, do you have any tips that you might? pass on about how you go ahead and configure OBS. Um, you mean with the audio stuff that we talked about? Well, yeah, I guess every, it, it's not worth going into the, the super details because I feel like everyone's setup is slightly different as far as how they're going to get OBS to pick up their audio. Um, right. but yeah, I guess, yeah, let's, let's talk about how we do it and, you know, okay. I, there's definitely some why I do it the way I do it, um, but you know, it it varies person to person. So I think we both are using uh, Soundflower and Audio Hijack. Yeah, well, let's back up because uh, first of all, oh, yeah. we're both on Macs. Yes, um, we're both on uh, MacBook Pros. I think we have almost the same model. So they're a few years old. But they can certainly handle um, DJing and streaming on the same machine. Some people don't want to do that or their machines, you know, they don't think their machines can handle it. So they they do the streaming on a separate machine. Um, I'm not sure how to help with that. But if you can do it on the same machine, um, the intricacies were a little tough to work out at first. 
So I'm, I might not remember the details, but oh, I got this. This is, this is boring for the non nerds out there, so I apologize. But um, with Soundflower, you, Soundflower is basically a, a you have to kind of search for it because it's old and not really supported. But it's a free utility that lets you uh, like sort of reroute audio or, or um, how would you describe it exactly, Paul? So Soundflower is a is a freeware utility that lets you sort of replicate audio devices. So if you say, you know, if you create a Soundflower device, it can be going to more than one place at once. I mm. think that's the best, you know, so like, uh, you know, now I'm super confused about it. <laughs> it's it's tough to articulate, but it allows you to, in audio MIDI setup, you can create um, a multi-output device. So basically it's a way of getting output uh, from your tractor interface to also go somewhere else. So you create a hybrid device and it's kind of splitting those outputs for you. So... Shit, I'm not even remembering this, and I don't have the computer with me I'm on a different machine right now. <laughs> oh, I can I can actually look. It's right behind me. Hang on a second. Um, why don't you talk about Audio Hijack, and I'll actually pull up my Soundflower config. Yeah, Audio Hijack is a handy utility. Um, you can use it for free, but there's a limitation to it. So if you want to use it for real for more than 10 or 20 minutes, I think is the cutoff. Um, you do have to pay a licensing fee. It's something like 40 or... I think I got it when it was cheaper, but it's something like 40 or 50 bucks. But uh, it's really not that bad. It lets you grab system audio or audio from any other output source. You can record it, you can run it through plugins, and you can send it to any output device. So it's very handy for routing things. And that's what I'm using to get the tractor output, um, send it to my physical output so I can hear it in the room, but also send a copy into OBS, the streaming software, so that it, so that Twitch can get the the um, the best quality audio straight straight out of the app. It's not going through any other audio to digital conversions and you know out of the system and back in the system. It's going straight to the software. And that's so really that's our, yeah, that's yeah. my sticking point is trying to save, cut down the number of conversions to as few as possible. Right, right. And that, that's how you maintain that fidelity. So, um, yeah. And so Soundflower lets you create a multi-output device that is both Tractor and the Soundflower 2 channel. And so you then have Audio Hijack take your audio and send it to this multi-device so that way OBS can listen in on Soundflower without interrupting Tractor doing its thing. It sounds confusing, and it is confusing, but once you have it set up, it's, it's, it's pretty approachable. I, I was very frustrated uh, the first day trying to, trying to get that to work. All the tutorials I was finding online did not work. Uh, it was pissing me off, but uh, finally I kind of found the, the solution that worked for, for my system. So um, got that going. And then other than that, you know, OBS is the, I mean, there's a slight learning curve, but once you get into it, it's, um, it's fairly, it's fairly easy to use. It's fairly uh, powerful with what it can do visually as far as, uh, putting something in the background, putting images uh, on top of it, or, or um, you know, you can do a lot of different things. I know uh, Mechno plays with transparent um, animated uh, images on top of his video uh, signal. So you can do windows within windows. You can do a lot of different things, different uh, multiple camera angles at once. It's uh, It's really cool. So, you know, over the last couple times we've done it i've tried a few different things and um i'm just getting to something i really like uh now i think yeah i i think one thing that's important to note when you're setting up obs is that when it comes to configuring the audio bit rate you just want to max that i think a lot of people um they sort of 
play it safe and maybe prioritize video a little too high. I don't really care that much about video. It's just going to, I mean, it's cool, but it, it doesn't really suffer from being like lower resolution. You, you get the gist of it. It's not like I'm fascinating to watch DJ, but <laughs> you know, the pre, uh, prioritizing the audio with a higher bit rate is definitely a good move. Yeah. Yeah. For real. Um, the video, especially if you're just, you know, even if you have some visualizations going, it's just somebody standing around DJing. It's not super exciting. So uh, the audio is a real important part, especially because, you know, some people aren't watching. They just kind of have it on in the background or they're playing video games or, you know, uh, different things. Yeah. Um, and one of the things I started, uh, mostly because you suggested it, um, is looked into uh, visualizations. I actually found something called Project Milk Siphon, which is an open source um, version of uh, Milk, Milk Drop. Drop. Yeah. Yeah, which is an older um, visualization package. But uh, it only works on certain versions of Mac OS, which is sad. But I guess I have the most recent one that it still works on. And it comes with something like 1,500 uh, oh, presets. Yeah, a bunch of different visualizations. So. I've been trying to curate a good collection that I like that are pretty cool, pretty trippy and get it to, um, you know, randomly flip through those as the music plays. And I was, I played with it for the first time last, uh, this last stream for X humanity. I think it worked really well. I think people dug it. Um, I did have some in there that caused a little bit of a performance issue. So I've, I've been trying to weed those out and it should be better next time. Well, I I definitely heard a lot of people's buzz about yours being really good, and that was a really cool reactive background. Um, so Siphon is this is this is a deep dive into nerd territory, but Siphon is a protocol that allows one program to share its video output with other programs on the system. So there's actually like. I use Siphon for Quartz Composer. Quartz Composer is sort of a visual programming la language that lets you make your own visuals and audio reactive stuff and do a lot of custom work. So most of my video stuff I do in Quartz and then just sort of patch it into OBS. But I'm shocked at how well even my 2013, this now a seven-year-old MacBook, can handle doing DJ streaming, video processing, uh, like the, everything that it did, audio transformation, all that stuff at once without really creeping up on CPU. It's really impressive. Yeah, they're they're good machines, and you know my my philosophy whenever I'm buying a new computer is to, to really max out uh, the CPU as much as I can for, for the money I want to spend. And, uh, you know, the, the one thing you usually can't upgrade. Um, if you have a tower, you can, but Macs don't make great towers anymore. Maybe the new one's good, but damn, it's been a while. But anyway, in a laptop, you're probably not going to be upgrade, be, be able to upgrade the processor. So you get the best you can and uh, try to future proof it as much as possible. And yeah, th these machines are holding up real well. Yeah, I, I will definitely agree with you that even, especially lately, Apple has decided like even the hard drives are no longer, um, they're no longer interchangeable. They're actually soldered on the board. So if you get a two terabit hard drive and outgrow it, external storage is an option, but there's no replacing your internal. Same with the memory. So, that's yeah, funky. I guess. Is, well, that's just with the laptops. Yeah, the new the new uh, 20, 2020 uh, MacBook Pros with Touch Bar and all, which Touch Bar is is fucking dumb. Like nobody's like, oh yeah, I really want that. Yeah, it's just something else to break. And they finally realized part of their problem and brought back the escape key, making it a real key and not tying it onto the virtual touch bar thing because it was dumb. Oh, okay. Well, I have to say, 
I, I recently just got a, an iMac and uh, they haven't updated it. The recommendation is don't buy them, but I needed a new computer and the new Mac Pro, the entry level eight core performance was worse than the fully upgraded iMac performance. Not even the iMac Pro, just the regular iMac fully upgraded. So I went with the iMac and uh, I was almost shocked to find out that the RAM is easily user accessible and upgradable. It was a very, very nice to find out. What? That's amazing. Yeah. There's a little like hatch on the back and you just pop it open and flip those fuckers out. Well, how, how has new computer life been? It's been very good. Um, you know, primarily it's, this is my music production machine. So there's still a couple, I've still seen a couple weird issues where the, um, the music synthesizer software I use, uh, I use a lot of Omnisphere. Uh, it's made by Spectrosonics. Sometimes it doesn't crash exactly, but if it seems to get sort of overloaded, instead of the overload message from Logic that'll pop up and your session just stops, um, Omnisphere sort of the sound just stops for a minute and everything ke- the project keeps playing and then the audio comes back it's almost like it's almost like there's some sort of you know omnisphere is sort of crashing and coming back in the background somehow i don't know what's going on with that i never saw that on my other system so hmm. um it's only happened in older projects though if i start a new project i wonder if that would still be a thing but it it takes a lot to max it out for it to do that so there's and there's ways around that. And when I find that happening, I can uh, bounce some of the tracks out and not have to have them playing through that through the synthesizer every time. So I just have to get a little bit smarter about that. Well, but the performance is great. Congratulations on your new uh, baby cyborg or whatever. However, <laughs> did you name it? Uh, yeah, I named the system. Uh, I think I called it Azathoth. Okay, good one. Because I have a Lovecraft theme going with the the machines in the house very nice well i hope azathoth uh does you well for many a year probably will i mean surprisingly these these things last for a decade or so and are still quite yeah. relevant so yeah yeah a lot of people shit on apple but you don't <laughs> you don't get like a lenovo that's still relevant after a decade you like really it, don't it just doesn't happen I mean, my, my old machine still works, still works well. Um, it's just, you know, the intense audio processing is get, it's getting to the point where it doesn't handle that very well. But, um, you know, my wife is going to keep using it for, for school and stuff. That's going to be her main, mach- main machine going forward. And, uh, you know, it's still fine. It's, it still has a, a lot of processing power and yeah, she's, she's going to be enjoying it for free. So there you go. There you go. It's, uh, Eleven years old now, and it's still doing great. Wow, that's yeah. Well, you've also done some. You've upkeep. You've done upgrades and whatnot on it. So it's it's yeah. A, I thought your machine's pretty pretty swank. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's um, it only has like thirty two gigs of RAM. Like I didn't max out the RAM or anything. I did max out the processor as best I could, but uh. And it's not nothing too special. It was just a good architecture from the beginning. It's it's a really well designed machine. Dope, nice. Yeah, man. Um, so you you mentioned before. Well, you've mentioned several times making music. You have anything in the pipe? I do. Uh, the going is very slow, but um, I'm trying to do uh, another EP. And I've been trying to collaborate with people, and that has slowed down considerably in this situation. So, um, yeah, I don't know when this is ever going to come together, but I'm working on it. Any uh, any names to drop for a collab? Oh, not right now. Uh, not really. Just working with um, the drummer who appeared on my last record, uh, Eric cool. Costa. A uh, very, very talented guy. Uh, of recent birthday? Yeah, he just, <laughs> he just had a birthday. <laughs> That's correct. Uh, yeah, that was another weird thing. We had kind of a virtual Zoom meeting uh, to say hi to him on his birthday. That was interesting. 
How weird. For, yeah, but uh, good though. Cool. Yeah, it was actually it was a night of the storm, and he lost power, so it was a challenge <laughs> oh, no. for them to to get on to the meeting. It was kind of funny. But um, speaking of the last couple days, did you catch the Dark Side of the Con stream on the 16th? I did not catch the most recent one, unfortunately. How was it? I missed it. Oh. I well, noted I... it. I had other plans, and I missed it. I, Angel Spit, uh, Ego Likeness, Panic Lift, The Long Lost. Yeah, uh, some good names. You know, yeah, yeah. I think good. that's sort of a nice upside is if – it's bringing these these artists together to do this stuff and granted it's you know it's free it's or i shouldn't say free it's a promotional endeavor for them because any of the artists who are participating in the in these like stream of palooza type things they they hope to get you know band camp and merch sales and you know i wish them the best but it's really cool for the fans oh yeah yeah, no, it's great. Um, in fact, uh, a friend just sent me a link to, um, there was a Peter Hook and the Light uh, show, I think from 2015, that uh, they streamed for 24 hours. Uh, it was like a three-hour show, and uh, I hadn't thought much of hearing that, okay, Peter Hook had a totally new band and was doing Joy Division songs, but honestly, it sounded fucking fantastic. And uh, I know it was from a couple of years ago, but damn, it was really good. So, I mean, stuff like that, that wasn't exactly a live stream, but um, there's a lot of things like that happening these days. And uh, it's really cool. It's uh, it's a bunch of good stuff. Yeah. I mean, the situation is that there's so many local cultural, I don't want to call them scenes. I'll just call them cultural manifestations where people have worked really, really hard to have like a relevant cultural presence. And then with all venues being shut down, it's, it's very difficult to, to like, you, you get panicky about staying relevant. Um, so you see a lot, you see like, uh, X Mortis, you see dark side of the con, you see corrosion, you see X humanity. They're all doing like really neat things, having streaming events, where people can be home and not, you know, not forget that they have a community that they're a part of. So it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's really nice too that um, people, you know, friends or acquaintances who aren't in the area get to see what our scene is all about, um, which I think is really cool. Um, at least one person I met on the Goth Cruise a couple of years ago. And uh, some friends who moved out of state years ago, you know, finally got to to see some of us do our thing. And I thought that was really awesome. Yeah, um, super cool. Some, yeah, some of the chats we got going with, um, you know, the, the chat room was was hopping and a lot of fun. So um, are, you, are you doing the next X Humanity show? Yeah, I am. All right. So there's another chance for our listeners to see what we really do. Um what is that, June 5th? Oh, boy, shit. I, I don't know the date. <laughs> yeah. Let me open up the I calendar. can do this. I got this. Come on. <laughs> yeah, June 5th. Yeah, first Friday right. in June. Yeah, June 5th. Uh, <laughs> Twitchtv.xhumanity. Check it out. Yep. Um, oh, shit. Oh, yeah. So I uh, I actually was able to connect with some of my friends in Serbia, and I've attended oh, some nice. of their streaming events, and – I now have a standing like hosting invite to go visit in Serbia. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. That's freaking great. I think I'll have to go to Belgrade. It's going to be dope. <laughs> if I, Dude. if I, if I make it back, it was dope. Can you uh, bring your stuff and spin out there? That'd be amazing. Uh, I have to talk to, uh, I have to talk to my DJ friend, see if he wants to do uh, Twitch hosting. What's fascinating is that, Serbian the the Serbian goth culture has very similar but very like not entirely overlapping classics. It's fascinating to listen because the song will come on and people will like, "Yay, it's Funhouse with Gimme Gimme Gimme," and you're like, hmm. "The fuck!" But it, you can understand how this song became one of their like 
club anthems because it it has all of the the nutrients that a, a goth song should have, but just never got played in in our sphere. Interesting, cool shit. Yeah, man. So if you can if you can take it international every once in a while, go for it, and you'll you'll see some some pretty interesting stuff getting played. Good advice. Diversify your fucking bonds palette there. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So and protect your neck. Well, of course. Yeah. So what other sort of impacts has this situation had on you? Is, is there anything getting pushed off that you're pissed off about or? Well, you know, it, I'm, I'm excited for dark side of the con to, to not be a virtual event, but yeah, I'm pushed out to uh September. Yeah. So I have to, I have to take a moment and, and speak to the listener listeners and let them know that like, when you go to the grocery store and you see someone wearing the mask and it's like hanging off their chin or it's below their nose, you're not alone being frustrated. There's a lot that's on the line. We all want to have a good Halloween. We all want to to go to the rescheduled conventions and festivals. But if people don't like just do the things they're supposed to do and cover up, this shit's going to last a lot longer than it has to. So you're not, you're not wrong. If, if you get pissed off every time you go to the grocery store, if you have to grab a kid, you do it. You grab a kid and you say, cover up, you son of a bitch. (laughs) Well, that's probably assault, but, um, okay. Don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. But I have to say it's, it's May 19th today. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're pretty deep into this. And, um, if anyone doesn't know, we're in New York, so we're pretty serious about this shit in New York for obvious reasons. Now I was at the grocery store yesterday and the grocery store is pretty good. Everyone at least has a mask somewhere on their face. (laughs) They get credit for trying. Yeah. It's not like Walmart where there's people just. If if the if the employees have a mask, it's around their neck. You know, it's not even on their face. Or there's people with no mask that they're letting into the store. The grocery store is better than that. Yeah. But yesterday, yesterday, May 18th. Wait, 18th? Yes. May 18th. There was a lady on the phone with no mask at all. Just grocery shopping, talking loud on speakerphone. As she was shopping, like nothing was going on. It's just like, what the fuck? Are we allowed to just say, hey, fuck face, cover up. You're going to make this we, thing last a I, lot longer than it has to. Yeah, I think that's warranted at this point. I mean, what the hell? Like, I can only give so many dirty looks, you know what I mean? And... I don't know. Like, I'm so don't want to deal with people that even my anger won't overcome that social just let's just get the fuck out of here and not deal with people feeling. But, Mm. uh, you you know know what I'm going to do? What? I'm going to go to the store manager. I'm old enough that I can flex that like (laughs) that. I need to speak to the manager privilege (laughs) and just just say, look. For the for the safety of everyone who's shopping here, if someone's in here without a mask, you got to get someone to confront them. Which, I, which, on the other hand, I hear myself saying this, and I'm like, oh yeah, you're going to take someone who's making minimum wage and already at risk and make them go confront people who are obviously fucking idiots. Like, that's really not entirely fair. So maybe well, I'll sh- do it. They shouldn't be letting them in in the first place. I thought that was the law. I don't you think know? there. I think there is no law. I think it's a lawless, uh, a lawless <laughs> frontier. Yeah, it's a lawless wasteland. <laughs> Which actually, I I heard some. I read something really cool. Hold up, I heard. Um, so the the term outlaw. This is actually golden info. The term outlaw doesn't just mean a criminal. It means someone who is outside of the protection of law, meaning Mm. if you see them, you can just kill them. 
You can do whatever you got to do. They're an outlaw. They're just carte blanche. You go, you do you. So I think all these people with the, the mask around the neck and the not even having a mask and talking to the cell phone like it's a Star Trek communicator, outlaw. You just do what you got to do. <laughs> Okay. So I, okay, I got Again. some. I got some issues. Okay, it's it's clear. From, <laughs> this from is a legal, from a legal advice standpoint, I just have to tell the listeners that you know that's Magno's opinion, and don't take <laughs> it as <laughs> impetus know. to do anything you wouldn't normally do. All right, so do what you got to do, but on the same note, don't do what you got to do. Okay, just don't do it. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we've been very delayed with the podcast because of all this, and, and I apologize. Um, it's been weird. I've been working from home. You've been working from home. Uh, we're lucky because we can work from home. Yes, I prefer not working not from school, home. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I prefer working from home to not working from home. You know, if it, if I'm going to be from home, I might as well be getting the paycheck as well. So that's okay. Yeah. But it is kind of frustrating. Like, it's really not the same as yours. Better, worse? What do you think? I kind of like it. There, There is a missing element. Um, there's certainly a an activity component that's weighed down. My building is pretty large, and I used to be able to get up you know, every few minutes and walk around, you know, do a couple flights of stairs. Um, I tried to do that kind of thing at work just to, just to keep moving and, you know, take little breaks during the day. But when, when you're home, you're kind of at your computer, you're, you're there, there's not much, many places to go. So you're just kind of sucked in. Um, so that's, that's a little, you know, that's one downside. You have to find your way around that. And the other thing is, it is nice to go over, to be able to go over, you know, walk to someone's desk and ask them a question or get a couple people together real quick and figure something out. It's just not quite the same on on the messaging tools. Um, you can do it, but it's it's more of a pain, it seems. But beyond that, I like it. You know, I'm, I'm not much of a social person. I don't have a lot of, like... F- real social friends at work. I have work friends, but not anyone I would stand around and bullshit with for 10 minutes, really. So I'm not missing a whole lot there. Um, I feel pretty good about working from home. I've, I've gotten used to it. I'm in the groove now. I dig it. Okay. I guess I'll give the, the pro tips that were given to me, which is if you're working from home, try to set aside even a small portion of your living situation that is just your workspace and don't hang out there if you're not working. So like create an area that is work so that when you leave that, you don't feel like you're always working. That's like an emotional weight that you can alleviate. Not saying that I've done that because I'm still set up in the kitchen, which is probably the worst place you can be. But Mm. If you if you can manage it, a separate working space is definitely good. Um, it's a funny thing because I've noticed that since I've been working from home, my attention to social media and, and online stuff has really fallen off quite a bit. I guess because it's all I can do at work that like once it's done, I don't really want to look at Facebook Messenger or look at uh, – look at text messages, look at signal, look at any of that. I'm just like, it's hard for me to interface with that online stuff because I'm so tied into it for the work day. It's weird. Yeah. I I hear you there. I hear you there. And certainly, you know, I, I would preach this before this whole situation came about, but man, staying off of Facebook, like not messenger, not something that's like functional, but, Facebook itself, especially right now, I'm just so happy I'm not on there anymore. Like, I'm just not paying any attention, and I think it's doing me a world of good. I feel like something happened not, I don't know, not not all that long ago, but 
fairly recently, something happened and Facebook just is not very appealing. It's not something you can really scroll through and have like, it. it's not something that encourages endless scrolling. It's not like Reddit where you keep finding more interesting things the more you scroll. It's more like a negative Reddit where the less faith in humanity you have, the more you scroll. Yeah, so, it's it's weird. It's gross. Yeah, it's nasty. Yeah. Not saying now, Reddit can't be nasty. It's nasty in its own way. Uh, um, yeah, well, a couple other things that got pushed back because of all this. Oh, yeah. Um, we had a vacation scheduled, a uh, big vacation that my mm-hmm. wife was very excited about. We... Um, are waiting for our refund and we're going to have to reschedule that probably next year, which kind of sucks. Oh, it did get, it did get uh, canceled. Oh yeah. It was like a couple weeks ago. It was supposed to be. So, Oh shit. Yeah. I'm so super sorry. That sounds like an awesome yeah. thing that just didn't happen. It's uh, it's on, it's on touchy's bucket list and I really wanted to take her there. Um, specifically Harry Potter world. So that's a bummer, but, uh, we've been trying not to focus on that and, uh, we should be able to get our full refund. Apparently that's in the works and we'll try to reschedule it, uh, sometime next year, but, uh, it kind of sucks, you know, it's kind of a bummer. And the other big thing was, um, you know, that goddamn Stoker record was supposed to come out. We were going to have a big release party. I was going to DJ, and a bunch of bands were going to play, and uh, nobody has any idea when that's going to happen. So that's kind of a bummer as well. But can't you, know, can't you hold Booster's feet to the fire and say, "Listen, what's up?" No, no it's really <laughs> no. You can't do coordinating. That. I mean, not even one band can get together in the same room. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Trying to coordinate some kind of Twitch streaming between like four different bands in like 16 different locations. It's just very impractical. True. Word. So it's going to wait though. It's, it's going to happen. They're probably going to get it out digitally first and then they'll get a physical release going and have the, the party in a couple months, but just no one can say when that's going to be. So it's, it's frustrating if you, if you're trying to book a live show, um, when you don't really know when things are going to reopen, it's, it's just tough. So if you were to guess, would you say, mm, let's see, we're in May now. We know June, beginning of June is not happening. Would you say July, August, it's, it's, would you say August? There's you talking about- shows that you can go to like physically oh. go to. Um, specifically for shows, I'd say August, maybe, maybe Mm. it's hard Mm -hmm. to say, especially because who knows if this thing is going to go linearly the way everyone hopes it's going to go. I think there might be some upticks and some, you know, a couple steps forward, a couple steps back, you know, we might be adjusting, you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. We'll see. I mean, <clears throat> I think there's talk about second wave of infection and people relaxing too early and it causing an upswing. And I guess we'll see. But just I'm I'm going to say that I plan on wearing a mask in public for the rest of my life. <laughs> it's the way it should be. Like it's it's a right that has been stigmatized for so long that. You know, okay, I'm crazy. I know that my views are eccentric, but there's, we live in a surveillance state, and the only thing a person can do is wear a mask. That's the only, and it's stigmatized so much that, like, oh, you're a crackpot if you wear a mask. But now that masks are acceptable and, and they're cool, just don't let it go. Always wear a mask. Always. Don't stop. That's it's good I advice. Say. It's that's decent advice. Um, I have to say, um, there's some legal stuff uh, going on with my family, and I had to go get something notarized the other day. 
And uh, there's rules in New York where you can do this um, remotely now. If you if you can video conference with the notary, there's a way where you can uh, electronically pass the document back and forth and blah, blah, blah. So I, I pursued that angle first, but the person told me, oh, I don't have a scanner at home. Can't you just go to a bank? So I'm like, okay. So I had to make an appointment to go to my bank. So I went there. It was just very strange going to a bank wearing a mask. And it was <laughs> even, yeah, and it was even stranger because there was the, um, you know, the armored truck guy was there, like, you know, making a pickup or something at the same time. And I'm like, I'm in this mask and this dude with a gun and, you know, the armored vest is next to me. And it's just very bizarre. But, uh, you know, hey, such are the perks, I guess. But I guess to that end... I don't think that there's been a statistical uptick in the number of robberies because of the mask policy. So, oh no, we would have heard about that. Yeah, yeah, anything that like anyone who later is like, no, you can't wear a mask because then everyone would be free from from culpability for their actions. That's bullshit. You go ahead, you keep wearing that mask forever, <laughs> forever. Sleep with it. Batman yeah. mask, whatever you got. Well, Batman Sub-Zero. is kind of, kind of the opposite of, yeah, there you go. Sub-Zero, Better there example. we go. Yeah. Not not or, Batman. <laughs> or, or Scorpion. Okay, yeah. Or whatever the fuck their names are. I don't even know. Yeah, could be. So, uh, due to a lack of visual feedback, wh- how are you doing on that first cup? You know, I was hoping you were gonna, going to uh, suggest that that it's time to refresh because my cup has been dry. Like I drained it in the first 10 minutes. So I am (laughs) so ready for the next round. So for the first time, Mexican drink on air, as it were, I'm not measuring. Just letting the vodka sort of cover the ice. And this is a seven and a half ounce Sprite. It's just a little too much, but it'll be all right. Get that in there. It's wonderful. Nice little fizz for you. And it calls for a splash of grenadine. Oh, that looks nice. Nice little splash. And there we go. Super sweet vodka drink. The blood moon, if you will. I pronounce it very sweet. Can't taste that vodka at all. Which is probably going to make people happy. Now... I also have some chocolate bitters. So I'm going to try a couple couple drops of that, see what that does. Mmm. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah. You back? I made it. All right. Welcome back. What do you have? Uh, so I thought that I had Sprite. I did not. I oh. thought that I had vodka. I kind of did. I thought you just bought vodka. I did not make it to the liquor store. Oh. So, so I I popped into the cabinet and I was looking and I was like, okay, I see there's vodka there. And I know I have some Sprite in the fridge. So we're good. Totes not good. Well, good <laughs> in a different way. So my variant on the Sprite, vodka, and grenadine is... Oh boy, it's blueberry blueberry vodka with Monster Ultra Sunrise, which is sort of like crushed up Smarties. Ugh. And you know, hey, that stands on its own. So that's what I got. <laughs> what do you, what do you have? Okay. And what are we what are we shooting for? What what is the name of this drink in in uh, in posterity? This is another X X human drink special. Um, this was called. This went by 
at least one name, perhaps multiple. Um, we have it under the Blood Moon. So this is this is a Blood Moon. What we have is a, a shot of vodka with um, uh, the rest of the eight ounces made up of Sprite and a splash of grenadine. Now that's the original recipe. That's what I made. And I made it, by the way, with a new purchase. I picked up Albany Distilling Company's oh, oh, uh, oh. vodka. Yep. Um, ALB vodka. And uh, it's very cheap. And it's very clear. It's pretty smooth. It's a nice, neutral, pleasant vodka. I was pleasantly surprised. Didn't know what to expect, but it's nice. It's not uh, amazing, but it's pretty neutral as a vodka should be. That's cool. So, uh, pretty good vodka. And uh, in mine, also earlier today, I picked up from Woodford Reserve, I picked up their chocolate bitters, which is a bourbon barrel aged. And uh, I put a little bit of that in here. Nice. Uh, chocolate. Yeah, the, the chocolate bitters just gives it a nice uh, dimension, a little bit. You know, it's it's a very sweet drink already, so some of the bitter chocolate flavor just changes that profile, and it doesn't add any sweetness, but it uh, it gives it, you know, especially the smell. The smell really comes off the drink as, as chocolate, and it gives it a whole different uh, different feeling. So I think it was um, it was Siffy, DJ Conscript, who long while back issued the correction that grenadine is not a cherry but is rather a pomegranate uh syrup so it's po- it's chocolate pomegranate that you've come up with somehow and i think mm. it sounds delightful nice take a sip well, what do you think uh rosie's grenadine is mostly high fructose corn syrup anyway but uh no it's it's very nice it's it's very sweet it has that chocolate hint to it um some ice for you Hmm. You can't taste alcohol at all, so I think a lot of folks would really dig that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say that <clears throat> my absolute cousin of this, distant cousin, maybe even friend of the cousin, it's so <laughs> removed. But mine, if you're a person who really likes the candy nerds then this is absolutely your jam. It tastes like a liquid form of nerds with zero perceivable alcohol, just candy. So it's like drinking a tall candy. That sounds like something Tenchi would love. Uh, review that one again. That <laughs> What was the alcohol there? Blueberry? It is blueberry vodka with Monster Ultra Paradise, which is the green monster. A.K.A. Okay. the horrible one that's probably going to be discontinued soon, but is actually okay with tequila, as I found out. Um, okay. But yeah, blueberry vodka and Ultra Paradise, and it tastes like nerds. It's it's pretty good. I would If I were serving this in the bar, I would just call it nerds. That's fair. See what happens. How about Nerd Massacre? Sure, we could go with that. Why not? I, I mean, know. definitely you know, spice it up a little. It will cause problems. Like people will. Th- this is something people could definitely overdo. Bless them. Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so we talked about some music stuff, but I think there's probably a little bit more in terms of like new releases oh. or things that you've been excited about. What a what are in your ears? recently oh well uh i feel like a lot has been going on um especially because it's been so long since we talked so a couple of the things i find new and notable um there's kind of a lot first of all there's a new assemblage 23 record that i think isn't going to be out until september um but it's something I I uh, contributed to on Indiegogo or whatever it was on. And I'm really excited about it. I think it's going to be killer. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Gasoline Invertebrate. Um, Brian's uh, um, 
Brian Gropner from the Gothicals, his uh, other project, Gasoline Vertebrate, the new record Damage Over Time just came out for the Kickstarter backers. Ooh. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise I think it's going to be out next month, early June, I think. I could okay. have that wrong. Uh, apologies if that's incorrect, but uh, uh, it's called Damage Over Time, and um, I just got it today. I had a quick listen to it, but I couldn't really absorb it. Uh, good production. I think he used a bunch of uh, like guest producers, and he has uh, at least one collaboration on there with uh, different vocalists. So, uh, pretty interesting stuff. I got to sidetrack you for a second. Yep, yep. How do you feel about collabs? Uh, I know, listening to them, or what do you mean? Well, for instance, there was an artist that we both know, um, Morris Black, Brian Black Noise. And yeah. he was he was picking up some interesting collaborations. He was working with Amelia Arsenic. He was working with Pete Crane. He was working with like some pretty intriguing people. And I asked him, "Who is the like? Who's next? Who are you working with next? You should really team up with so and so." And he kind of got like I think for a second I I might have hurt his feelings a little bit. Because, hmm. like, it, he kind of seemed to have a feeling like, what, I'm not good enough? Like, which is not at all what I meant. It was just an exciting thing to, like, see how those drinks mixed, you know, like. Okay. So how do you feel about collaborations and, I guess, to a, to some extent, remixes? Well, I don't know. I think that's an interesting question because uh, recently I found – Okay, well, maybe I shouldn't talk about this, but I will anyway. Oh, shit, I found, yes! <laughs> I found a Russian site that had collected, um, like, there's various um, official sites where you pay or you subscribe in order to get the tracks of famous songs that you can play with or remix. And this Russian site had sort of collected a bunch of those. And I just kind of stumbled upon it and I found some real interesting things. So similar to what Morris has done recently with, uh, what did he do? Like uh, Orgy's Blue Monday? Yeah, that was one he of them. Yeah, he did a version of that. So I might throw up a version just for free, you know, no profit involved. I might mess with uh, one or two songs and uh, throw them up on uh, on Bandcamp or somewhere people can get them for free. Um, just as a, you know, it's a fun exercise just to mess with something. Um, I might not go as like, he really went in a, in his sort of signature direction with that one, a little dubstepy, a little, you know, his industrial base thing. It's what he does. Yeah. He did his style. Um, I might do some of my style to some of these older songs as much as I can, but, uh, it's, it's a kind of a fun distraction. Like you don't have to write you know, sometimes coming up with not only with the song, but with the arrangement and with all the production and all the engineering, it's kind of daunting doing your own music all by yourself. So doing a remix or collaborating with someone takes some of that pressure off. So from an, an artistic perspective, it's, it's, uh, it's sometimes it's a load off. It's sometimes it's kind of a relaxing exercise it allows you to, to kind of flex creatively without having to put all the work in to make something that's really awesome. You're, you're taking something that's already cool and putting a spin on it. So it can be fun. Now that said, those projects can also be, I'll say maybe a little indulgent. Maybe they don't always hit the right marks. Maybe they're not always as entertaining to others as they are to you. Um, but you know, when the stars align, those things can be dynamite so you know it's it's hit, like anything else it's hit or miss but uh in general i'm into it i know that it it was a big um <clears throat> it was a big thing for djs and i was instructed early on in my in my djing career that if if someone has written in the book a version you know like a specific version that they were really asking for something. And if you play a remix instead of that version, you're, you're doing them a disservice. I don't know if I entirely yeah. believe with that. It's kind of like 
the DJ is a painter, and if someone calls out red, they don't necessarily have an entitlement to get red or to dictate what shade of red, as long as like the DJ sees what the what people are asking for. It maybe maybe they do, maybe they don't factor it in, but I don't think there's any sort of entitlement to it. Yeah, that can be tricky. Um, certainly, I, I don't know if that holds true for all audiences, but certainly our audience, or you know, I'll say my audience. Um, usually, when someone wants to hear a particular song, they mean that version of that song. Like you know, if you try to play the destroyed version of uh, uh, Lucretia, Lucretia, my reflection, you know, some people very different. Be, oh, this is. Well, it's similar though. It's I find it almost I find it very similar, just a slightly different take on it, right? Oh but yeah. Other people are like they hear that it's not the original and they just want to punch somebody. So, you know, some people might hear it and say, "Oh, this is interesting. This is this sounds good." You never know. And um some people are are very particular about that. Some people can take a remix um and, and go with it and, you know, cause in the club, we're just trying to, you know, our perspective is we're trying to weave together an experience. That's going to make the most people happy. Exactly. And also, you know, gives us some kind of creative, um, reward as well. So we're trying to kind of balance those two things. And if somebody wants to hear something that you always play or that, you know, you played last time, but they want to hear it again, you know, you might pull out one of those other versions. You might try to change it up a little bit. You might try a cover version. And it's not anything, um, you know, it's not shitting on that request. It's just trying to enhance things. It's just trying to bring something different. So that's where we're coming from. Um, yeah, I don't know. That that can be a tricky one. I actually, when I, I did a, when I was DJing for RuffleCon, I had someone who, got irritated my by my song selection and left like they actually flipped me off and left Oof. and then later apologized like years later apologized to me still holding this grudge and i had to just very rationally explain that i'm playing for a really really mixed group of people so when i'm responding to a request i'm trying to say how can i fill the sentiment of this request while making the most people happy at once. And I'm sorry it didn't meet what they were expecting, but my intentions were good. And for the most part, most people enjoyed it. They did not, but it's, it's how it goes. You can't always get everyone in one go. Yeah, it's, eh. it's true. Um, so yeah, where where was I? We just talked about gasoline and vertebrae. Oh yeah, right? gasoline and vertebrae. Sorry, that was a real deer. I blame the what should I? What is this? This is not a blood moon. This is like a. That's a nerd something. Nerd, nerd holocaust. moon. The, the nerd holocaust. Okay, <laughs> that sounds horrible. Okay, you got to give it some impact. You got to you got to sell it. All right. I don't know. Um, it's good. Speaking of Holocaust, uh, Seraphim System has been releasing singles here and there lately. Um, none of, they haven't really caught me, the, the last couple ones, but I know they have a full length coming on June 19th called Phoenix. So if you like the harder, more aggressive stuff, that's definitely something to look forward to. I think they do that harder style like really, really well. Um, I just found out about another upcoming release uh, from Bedless Bones. They're releasing a, um, uh, I believe it's a full length. It's called After Malaise, which has, I think, one or two originals, but it has uh, mostly some remixes from their last release. And one of those remixes is by a certain act called Witch Doctor. So you might want to watch for that. That's out Ooh. June 5th. Uh, Bedless Bones. Um, good act. Not super, super dancey, but I think a uh, really interesting style. Um, good stuff. Very cool. Uh, Mari Catman just uh, released a two-song EP called Drink. Um, just came out the, the 15th, a couple days ago. 
Um, really good. Two two tunes with uh, Mary singing. She's just I just love her vocals and uh, uh, good sort of laid back tunes. I really dug it. Now, did you are would you consider yourself a Birthday Massacre fan? And did you listen to the new Birthday Massacre album? I'm not a big fan. Uh, I don't mind them, but they don't really grab me. Um, I'm excited to see them live. I missed them live a couple times, and I'm going to see them at Dark Side, I think. And I really want to have that experience. I know the new record, Diamonds, it's also on my list. Um, I think I did hear it. It just it just didn't grab me so much. But it, it was it's good. It's fine. You know, it's one of those things. I feel I feel kind of bad. I I think that it doesn't quite live up to under your spell, which I th- think was the one before it. So the diamonds was a 2020 under your spell was a 2017 and it wasn't bad. And it was definitely, I mean the worst song on the album will definitely be better than anything you're going to hear just walking around in normal life. If, if you were able to walk around, which you're not stay inside, but anyhow, it's it's still like you know i i frame things in terms of like if the worst song on the album is still orders of magnitude better than what you would possibly encounter in the wild then it's a it's all right you can't say it's bad yeah yeah no it's definitely not a bad record um i just i feel myself getting more and more particular about music i'm in this mode where I'm getting everything re-rated and I'm, I'm flushing out a lot of old stuff that I have just to have, but I don't really listen to. So I'm in that mode that where I'm being like very particular with what I bring into my collection. So that one didn't make the cut, but that doesn't mean it's, it's not a good record. And yeah, I'm sure a lot of people will love it. Mm -hmm. Uh, In a similar vein, I'm a little torn on the new stone burner. It's called uh, Red in Tooth and Claw. I think it came out a couple weeks ago. I think it's good, but I don't know if I want it. I'm like right on the edge. I have to listen to it one more time and make up my damn mind. Hmm. Did you check that out? I have not. I, uh, you know, I enjoy Stoneburner live, but I've, for some reason, never had the, the, the right, the right timing to actually make me seek out their their recorded works Stephen Archer's well, check, yeah check it out on Bandcamp uh, it's pretty good um, similarly uh, the last record was really good this is kind of uh, proceeds a little bit in that vein um, we have uh, a lot of uh, Stephen uh, Stephen's vocals on here which is kind of a newer aspect of the band and uh, I think it's good the production is good um I'm just trying to figure out if I if I want to keep those songs. So I don't know if it's a, if it's anything I would play in the club. I'm not sure, but I, I dig it. And certainly other people would would play it. I just I don't know if it fits with my style yet. Hmm. Something something that does fit with my style is the new Panic Priest record called Second Seduction, uh, that also came out uh, a week or two ago, and uh, it's good. Panic Priest, uh, the first record was good. Um, this one is very good as well. Sort of a a little bit more of a throwback to sort of a classic 80s-ish uh, gothy sound. Um, good stuff. Nice if you've ever heard them, you'd know what I meant. Dark wave, post-punk, synth-pop type thing. Yeah, with the sort of... Cr- he calls himself like a dark crooner. I don't know if this one is super croony in the vocal area, but... Uh, dude can sing and uh, he does some cool stuff. So I would definitely recommend uh, people check that one out. And that's also a negative gain, right? That is correct. Nice. Yeah, they got some good stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, also, I talked about Caroline Blind before. Uh, Caroline Blind used to front the band Sunshine Blind uh, way back when. I really liked them in the 90s. And um, her solo stuff is also good, a little more stripped down, a little more, not totally acoustic, but uh, a little simpler, a little, um, I think it's electric guitar, but some of it is just, you know, voice and guitar 
or, you know, there's certainly, there's a few songs that are a full band that are a little more aggressive, but anyway, the, the, uh, album is called the spell between, and you can find it on Bandcamp. You can find mo- uh, I think all of these on Bandcamp. Um, Caroline blind, great voice. Um, if you've ever heard sunshine blind, um, you know what I'm talking about. Girl can sing, um, good songs, a lot of cover songs from the wake. I think they cover red, red, uh, Lori, yellow Lori, and maybe one or two other. I think there's a Swans cover, uh, nice. and certainly uh, a handful of originals as well. So pretty good stuff. Um, Very cool. Much, yeah, a much longer thing also came out from Oscar Terra Mortis, uh, called Goth Covered. It's 33 tracks of different bands covering sort of classic goth songs. So your mileage may vary. But you might want to check it out. Um, there's lots of titles you'll recognize by some bands you probably won't recognize. So you can hear some some familiar tracks with some uh, different sounds. So if so I you might want to check that out, if I remember right, that's got a, uh, a "Damsel in the Dollhouse" track on it, doesn't it? I don't recall. It's it's been a while. This one came out a good month or two ago, so it's a yeah, little fuzzy. If- if I remember right, um, and Damsel in the Dollhouse has actually been out to just as an attendee to X Humanity, so I feel oh. like some kind of affinity. But um, I think I'm trying to remember what was on there that that kind of stood out as far as as artists. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of She Pleasures Herself, but I know that they were on that. But yeah, okay. I, I thought it was a cool. A cool uh, various artist assortment. Yeah, it's uh, definitely something to check out. Um, I enjoyed, you know, kind of combing through, looking at some of my favorite tracks, and uh, seeing seeing what they sounded like, you know, through some different bands. So, uh, pretty cool stuff. All right, I'm nearing the end. Just stick with me for a no, minute. I'm with you. This is gold. I love it. <laughs> so, uh, a starry night. Um, their second album came out called Here Lies, and also on Negative Gain. Um, I didn't really get into their first one, but uh, the second one is pulling me in a little bit more. Um, they definitely have the late 80s post-punk aesthetic nailed. Like, if you didn't know this was a new band and you had this music on in the background, you would swear it was like the Chameleons or something from that era. It's, Hmm. it definitely has that sound and it's just a familiar, if you're into that sound, it's just a very familiar sound and it, it it really pulls you in. So I have to give the songs themselves a little more attention, but, uh, uh, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Nice. I see they have a, uh, a cheeky named, uh, named song Capulet loves Montague, which is, uh, yeah. that's cute. Yeah, I think that was their their single uh, before the album came out. Um, cool. That that one was out. So yeah, that uh, people. I think they have a video for that, if I'm not mistaken. So you can check that out as well on their Bandcamp. Very cool. Um, I feel like Bandcamp is really the the place now. Like, I don't is. really know where do you even buy. Like, I guess for mainstream stuff, people are shopping iTunes? Like I don't really know what the major music distribution is, but for everything that's not major mainstream, it's got to be Bandcamp. Yeah, I mean, you can probably still find a lot of small artists on ban on excuse me, on uh, iTunes because it is fairly easy and cost-effective to get your music published pretty much everywhere, including iTunes. But as we said before, you certainly, the artist will get more of your dollar if you support them on Bandcamp. And, um, you know, it's only like really major artists that aren't on Bandcamp. Like if you want to buy something from Portishead, you pretty much have to go to iTunes. Yeah. But uh, anyone else you can think of, you know, check Bandcamp first because that's really the best place to uh, to support them. And you'll probably get the best prices there because the band's 
I don't think can set their own prices on iTunes, but they can on Bandcamp and they can give you discount codes or, you know, they can run different promotions. Um, so definitely check them out there. You, you might get a deal and, and your money goes to the artist. Yeah, actually, um, I have a recent, recent story about Bandcamp. Um, I got into a, an artist called Josie Pace and mm. I had noticed that yeah, some, some artists will have a download discography option and some, yes. some don't. So just on a whim, I messaged Josie Pace from Detroit, Michigan and said, Hey, I, I, I noticed two things. I noticed that your, your Facebook link is incorrect. It probably goes to something old and that you don't have a link for buying your entire catalog to which they responded. They said, okay, fixed it. Now you can. And it was, there's, it's not a huge body of work. It's like maybe 20 tracks, but it is well worth getting Josie Pace's entire catalog. It's, it's a collection of singles. There's not really full lengths that are on that catalog, but they're all great. So it's definitely something I would recommend. They got a remix by Raymond Watts from Pig. And I'll probably, you know, uh, not to offend anybody, but I feel like the Raymond Watts remix is not as good as the original uh, version of Perfect Replacement by Josie Pace himself. So for what it's worth, but it, it's still interesting. Cool. Cool. I have a couple from Metropolis next. Um, forgive me on the pronunciation. I think this is a French artist. Is it Hunt or Hante? I've heard also. I've said Hante, Haint. <laughs> Haint? It Haint a problem. <laughs> I don't know about Haint, but uh, Hunt probably. Um, anyway, it's called Remixes and More. I believe it's a full length. It's mostly remixes from the uh, her most recent album. But there's also, I think it starts with three original tracks, three new tracks. So uh, I found it pretty compelling. Um, the new tracks are very good. Some of the remixes aren't all my style, but uh, a very worthwhile release. Uh, so check it out. She's a, cool. she's a great artist. I think she does her own production, and it's very impressive. Very nice. Yeah, also from Metropolis, uh, Clan of Zymox dropped another, I think it was a single. It's called Lovers. Um, good stuff. A couple remixes on there. Um, I recommend it. If you ever liked any of the old Clan of Zymox stuff, uh, this will be up your alley. It's, uh, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. That's and, all I can and say. Actually, that actually uh, has a Haunt remix on that album. There you go. That was the connection. So- there you go. They're together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Man, this fucking uh, nerd drink is wrecking me. <laughs> Damn. Good. That's what it's supposed to do. Yeah, I guess so. So, uh, all right. Two do this more at home, kids. Go for it. Yeah. Two singles and I'm done. Uh, we have Rose Garden Funeral Party with Salvation and Saving Face. Just a single track. But I like their sound, a very talented vocalist, uh, a band out of Texas, I think the Dallas area. Uh, Check them out if you haven't heard of them. They're pretty cool. Rose Garden Funeral Party. And finally, Antibody versus the Gothsicles, You Make Me Want to Learn How to Cook. It's a fun little song. If you like any of the Gothsicles antics, uh, you will dig it. Antibody versus the Goth Sickles. It's on the Antibody uh, band camp site. That is charming. <laughs> That's hilarious. That is the most music I think I've ever talked about. Well, there you go. hey, it's it's good music season, man. It is. Well, um, it's also been like two or three months. So, so it's I'm going to see. I'm going to see how how much music I can cover in two minutes. Oh Jesus. Okay, so uh, a friend of mine told me about Porches, so I picked up this release called This the The House. Excuse me, Porches is like um, kind of emo, kind of like a different version of Mr. Kitty. Kind of decent. I, I enjoyed mm-hmm. it. Uh, Static Bloom has released a, uh, Asphyxia and Asphyxia Remixed, which is pretty dope. There's some good remixes. Definitely some some great tracks. Static Bloom has like a good old school feel. Um, 
And at first I thought that they were like kind of aloof, but having seen them a couple times, they actually, when they realize people are coming to multiple of their show in different countries, they actually warm up to you quite a bit and they're like, Oh shit, it's you. So that it was pretty nice. Um, Zotox has a full length. The, uh, the single UFO is still my pick for that, but they just released, a. Uh, uh, I'm going to say, uh, Gestern, G E S T E R N Gestern, Gestern. But yeah, it's pretty dope. Uh, Kanga. Oh boy. This one's problematic. Kanga is one of those artists. I really like their studio work, but something about their live presence, like, rubbed me in the wrong direction. So it's hard. It's one of those things where, like, what what is that thing where they say never meet your heroes or something like that? Yeah. Isn't that a thing? It is, but you know, live live acts can be hit and miss. You know, they evolve. They they have bad shows, so you know, yeah. maybe and I'm gonna say, chance. I'm gonna say to be fair, not all music is intended to be performed live. Like going way back when I saw Chemical Brothers, it really was not about what they particular were doing on the stage. Because it was a huge thing. You couldn't really see them. There's just two nerds checking their email. But the whole video visual production thing that they did was pretty cool. So, like, not everyone has that that kind of, like, major label money to, to roll a, a big visual production. So, I don't know. They People do what they can, and they're you know, artists. Okay, okay, Kanga, you're all right. Um and um, it's sort of a psy trance sort of release. It's a various artist on Ombra International called International Waters. And uh, Illuminati Princess is definitely my pick on that. It is super good. It's like a nine-minute track, but it is so good. I so really want to take some, take some drugs right now because it's that oh, there good. You go. yeah. So back up a step. What was the Kanga release you were talking about? Uh, it's called Eternal Daughter. All right. It's pretty pretty recent. I think. A uh, full length or a single or Yeah, it's a full length. All right. So I guess the two weirdest things to come out of quarantine are in an effort to stop <coughs> biting my you all right? Oh shit, are you okay, dude? Yeah. Is it the Rona? No. Okay, good. Uh, you shouldn't have said anything because we're totally separated, so no one would hear that if I edited it out. Oh, well. I, I like it up. No, it's it's an intimate experience. They're hanging with us. They're concerned for your well being just as I am. Um, I don't know about that. So as part of the like best practices, you know, touching your face touching things, washing your hands. These all, all best practice, you know, like don't touch your face. I should say, uh, best practice, uh, application. So I had a bad habit of biting my nails. So in order to stop biting my nails, I just let my nails grow and they are the longest they've ever been in my life. And I look like Nosferatu. And I'm I'm kind of digging it. It's That's pretty good. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty good. Finally, um, so that's a good thing. Uh, that, so that they're my plague nails. That's the one one <laughs> like you know the strike beard. It's my strike beard, I guess. But my plague nails are pretty cool. Um, and I I decided. I'm, you know, I'm not attending any higher education and I felt like I was stagnating a little bit. So I was like, okay, if I were to take the tuition of taking one single class and instead invested in the educational, like took that money and put it in educational uh, direction and decided to try to learn something, what could I do? So I went ahead and I purchased a bunch of tools and a bunch of materials and I'm going to take a try at making latex clothing. Awesome. I, 
Yeah, I have a couple of very non-judgmental participants who will allow me to make garments for them, fully expecting that the garments won't be very good because I've never made any before in this material. But the cost of entry is not incredibly high. Um, You need a couple specialized tools like, I guess, a rotary cutter and a cutting mat are are pretty good, but the definitely the the biggest barrier to entry is that latex itself is fairly expensive. Um, and what I what I've picked up is if you purchase latex and it smells nice, then there's a problem. Like if it ah. smells like vanilla, it's because they treated it with something to mask the not healthy smell that it has. <laughs> And they may be manufacturing it out of something that is not good for you. But I found a good, a good supplier. I went with, um, latexrepair.nl from the Netherlands and, uh, ordered some stuff, ordered some patterns, ordered some materials. So we'll see how that turns out. So when you say the material is expensive, can you give us an idea of, of what you mean? Um, I think that my initial order was probably uh, $200 for a couple yards of latex. Okay. So it's really, I mean, it's a learning experience as well because almost immediately after purchasing, I realized that I could have gotten much more material that's as reputable from another source. But, I, you know live and learn and you get better at these things as you go. But you know, there's, I've been finding lots of different suppliers of materials, but um, you know, as far as a one-stop shop for getting started, uh, latexrepair.nl is, is cool because they have tutorials and they have the patterns and they have the materials. So you can, you can sort of pick up a starter kit right there and, you know, in whatever ridiculous amount of time it takes for you to get it because, you know, shipping is not really functioning with maximum expedience at the moment, but whenever you get the stuff, it's really just, uh, limited by whatever time you can put into it. So it should be a good experience. Awesome. Now, do you have any, have you ever tried? Actually you have. Um, I was going to ask if you have, 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 taken a hand at making clothing. And I remember uh, it was for like, it, it was sort of cosplay, but your green arrow was freaking great. Well, I didn't make anything. I, I was mostly altering things that pissed me off cause they weren't right. But, uh, I think that counts. Yeah. Well, okay. Um, yeah, I picked up, uh, you know, using the show, sewing machine, pretty well in the limited amount of time I spent on it. Um, and I, I had some skills at hand sewing from way back in the day, like in middle school, I used to wear this denim jacket all the time and I used to like, sew like military patches and shit on it. So, um, I had some hand sewing skills from way back. So that helped. And then the sewing machine was a bit of a learning curve, but, um, I seemed to pick it up pretty quick, but yeah, it was just hacking and, Resewing things that should have been better, but you know, weird Chinese sizing or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I haven't made anything from a pattern or anything like that. That's somewhat intimidating to me. Um, well, I think that there's, it. it's like a lot of things where the first time there's a lot of puzzle to work out, but after the first time, you've learned a lot of the conventions and you understand what they mean when they, when they are, when they make, when they make things a certain way and there's certain indicators of how it's supposed to be put together. The first time is definitely the hardest. And from after moving on from the first time, you pick up a lot of convention and it's not so bad. Sewing is, sewing is cool. Um, I think that there's quite a bit of difference between, latex clothing and sewn clothing latex is tricky because there's or it's different it's not necessarily tricky in a lot of ways it's easier you don't have to 
cut your pattern like anticipating the same seam allowances, which the, like the amount that the pa- the patterns have to overlap in order to sew them together. It's more you only put a seam allowance on one side because they glue together. So in some ways it's like kind of feels like an arts and crafts experiment and not so much technical sewing. But I definitely mm. think that there's there's a skill set to be had. And when you see the work of someone who's really, really good with it, where they have multiple patterns and colors and textures of latex going together – and the seams between them are really handled well, that's, you can really appreciate the garment. Cool. Now is the kind of, is the glue um, that's used like a, a solvent type of a glue or how does that work? So the, the glue that's used, and this is actually one of the, like I went with basically it's rubber cement, but, there's, you know, like like anything, you're going to have like El Cheapo rubber cement that is like weird ingredients and you have like high-end rubber cement, which is natural latex in a solvent. So the high-end stuff, which is what I got, I got um, Best Test white rubber cement for paper crafting. And it's just very, very pure natural latex in a heptane solvent. So that's, that's pretty neat because it, it gives you very strong bonds and it, it is just latex. It's not a whole lot of other additives. So you basically just put a little bit on each of the two pieces you're putting together, let it almost dry. So it's a little tacky and then you, you touch them together and they pretty much just bond and, that's you know you glue your pieces together so it's kind of it it's a weird thing to get around and there's there's nuances where different thicknesses of latex of course have different this is this is me like bringing school into this but different spring coefficients so like some will have different contraction forces than others so the amount that you would like when you're measuring a sleeve you might make a sleeve 10% smaller than what you measured because you want it to be a certain level of clingy where on the legs you only make it 8% smaller because otherwise it'll be uncomfortable. So it's little things like that that are only going to come in time and it's it's not something you can really learn from reading. You have to try it and see how it goes. Like so many things. Like so many things. You just do it and see what happens. Um, I take the mindset that I may not even turn out one reasonable garment, but education is a value in itself. So, you know, I'll, I'll know more about it than I did going in. And that's, that's fine by me, even though a couple hundred bucks is not trivial, but it's a cool educational expense and you got to stay sane during during this whole, what is it? Shelter in place, uh, society. So do what you got to do. That's right. Um, so looking towards wrapping it up, um, is there anything, is there anything, uh, giving you hope, anything you're looking forward to, anything you're excited about coming up? You know, Numerically, I think I've touched on this, that numerically and like pun wise, 2020 is amazing. And we passed the benchmark of having a Cinco de Mayo that was on a Taco Tuesday. (laughs) And ironically, a virus named after a Mexican beer fucked it up. (laughs) So... I don't, I'm just hoping that like when we come across, when we get to Halloween, which is on a Saturday and it's on daylight savings time and it's a full moon, this shit's past us and we can just like enjoy the synchronicity that, that we've, that we've worked towards, but we'll We'll see. We'll we'll enjoy it somehow. Yeah. But I want to actually enjoy it. Not like look on the bright side. I want to look on the dark side and really enjoy it, (laughs) like really enjoy it. But, 
That's fair. But hey, I guess one upside is I have been for me I've been uh classified as work from home for the remainder of 2020. Oh wow. So so whether or not things are lifted, I'll still be working. I think businesses are realizing that if they have a productive workplace and don't need to maintain as much facility stuff for them, it actually works out in their benefit. So, yeah, I think I think my work is is seeing that as well. Um, right now, we they've announced we're going to return to work around July sixth, but. I don't think it's going to be a full return. I think they are looking at, um, well, for instance, the IT department with developers, um, maybe six to eight months ago, uh, sometime in the last year, they recently fired some people who were remote workers for years. But um, they said, hey, you have to relocate to this area so you can report to headquarters or... I'm sorry, but we're going to have to eliminate your positions. And they actually got rid of a couple people who had been with us for a long time. Um, now, going through this situation, they're starting to hire remote workers again. Remote, you know, people, developers not even in this state. Like, you know, hiring people from North Carolina or wherever. Yeah. So they're they're really looking at it differently. And I hope we can get to a model where, you know, maybe we go into the office once or twice a week to do some face-to-face stuff, but mostly we can stay home. I think that would be really nice. So I I think we're getting there. I think things are changing and hopefully changing for the better. Um, Yeah. It makes sense. It's it's made sense for years, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've been working on setting up a a panic room slash office in the basement and – I think uh, once I have that set up, it'll be it'll be nice because having a place that I go to work, even if it's in the house and even if I come out and walk around every once in a while, it's still going to be pretty healthy and and practical to have that. Once I have that, yeah, I'm I'm going to be a twenty percent office person, meaning one day a week I'm in attending meetings or whatever doing face-to-face stuff. But other than that, I'm just doing my thing at home. Nice. I hope to be yeah. there with you. All right. All right. Well, um, hey, that's that's a good ending point. Um, anything else you want to say to these kids? No, I just hope that they're they're able to stay thirsty in these in these trying times and you know, keep the party going even though you're home. You can even if you're home alone, As long as you're logged into Twitch, it's okay to drink. (laughs) Very, very true. And uh, we hope to see you on Twitch this uh, coming uh, June 5th, Friday night, uh, starting probably around 9 for X Humanity. And um, I might be sneaking in some other things of my own on uh, twitch.tv slash Velocinate. Not sure, but we'll see. And uh, yeah. I hope everyone stays happy and healthy, and we'll see you guys again soon. Peace out, guys. Peace. Peace.